Okay. Doodle bud. So I asked on a previous video if you'd like to see me correct a nib on my little Muji fountain pen that my little two-year-old got his crazy hands on and bent. Let's just have a quick look. Whoa, this is tough to do. Oh, here it comes in focus, focus, focus. There we go. So I don't know. It's not picking up that great, but you can see that nib's not looking too good. It's bent a little bit. So um, there we go. You can see that one tine is bent off. One's fairly straight, but it's bent off. So what I'm going to do today is I've, you know, I've fixed tines that are, you know, up and down like that, even ones that are touch longer, but I haven't done the bendy tine fix. So we're going to try this today. And then also I don't really even care too much if I get that done very well, because what I'm also going to do is stub it um, just as a contrast, because I, because I got a brand new Muji right here, ready to go. Good nib. It's all unbent. It's in perfect condition so I thought let's see if I can get this one back sort of to where it should be as best as I can do and then also just stub it and then we can just do a comparison a stubbed version versus an out-of-the-box version so this video might be absolutely terrible and I think it actually probably will be we will find out and you might learn just don't do anything I'm showing you today or you might go, well, that's one way to do it, but that's terrible as well. Who knows? We'll see how this goes. This is an experiment, and when you do experiment, sometimes you learn that was a bad idea. So watch along with me to see how bad of an idea I've got going on today. Okay, so for, before I get started, i got a little better setup here to look at the tines. Still not amazing, but you can see that one there is kicked over, right? There we go. There's the other side there too. So that on this case, the right uh, tine is pretty good. The left one there, just that very end got kicked over. So you got to bring it back, obviously. So what I'm probably going to do, this is just me spitballing. I'm going to bend the tines like this first. So this is, let me, I, I can't bend my finger that way. So I'll just make my finger this way, pretend they're tines. So first I'm, you know, we got this one that's bent. Actually, let's bend the backwards. <laughs> I don't got flexible fingers. Anyways, so what I'm going to do is just do either this or this first, up and down. So then it's easier to, let me put this in focus. So then it's easier to get this back to where it should be. And then I can bring them back together. That's going to be my plan of attack. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so having a look at it, this left tine is already bent back a little bit. So let's just do that a little bit more and push the other one down. And bend this other one back a little bit. I figured, you know what, this is a good pen to do this on because it ain't expensive. And it's easier to replace, obviously, because I just go to the store. You know, and it's a pen where, you know, if this was a high-end pen, if this happened to my cherished Mont Blanc or my Visconti or Pelican or something like that, I would uh, send it to a Nibmeister. But for this pen, I'm just going to do it, give it a go. If I screw it up, I'm going to stub it anyways. And also, you know, worst case, you can replace it pretty cheap. So I'm just flexing, you know, spreading the tines and just holding it a little bit. And there we go. I think that's going to be enough to work with. We'll play around with that. So it's just going to be pushing the one tine down and just applying a little bit of pressure on the, on the table here. It's tough to get you a good angle. But I'm just pressing down on the nib just to get it back to square. Okay, so I'm going to push that one tine down and just apply pressure. I'm t sorry for the angle. I don't have the best gear and I've got terrible shadows here. But I'm going to press it that way. Give it a look. And I think actually if I pull it up, instead of pushing that tine down, so I'm going to pull this tine up now instead. I think that'll just get me a little bit more of what I want. Let's see where we're at. That's actually not too bad. So, whoops, bumping stuff. Let me show you. Let's get the loop set up. Actually, that's not too bad without the loop. Let me get that on the camera. Where is it? Let me zoom out. Sorry about that. So, 
quite a bit better. It's again, I can see this better through my own eye instead of through the camera. But we're pretty much back to where we want it to be. I have to align them. They're off a little bit, up and down. But we're pretty darn close. So it was really just applying it and then applying the pressure and then rotating up a bit just because it was at the very, very end of the tine where it was bent. And uh, so I'm just going to give a quick little tweak just manually instead of going through the camera because it's really hard to do this. And then we'll compare a writing sample between it's fixed as good as I can with a brand new one. So again, I, it's impossible for me by myself to film this and show you every little step I did. But essentially, you saw what I was doing there. I had to make the tines off just a little bit and I would just gently, very gently maneuver the pen just to bring it back in bit by bit. It's just light pressure and just let, you know, 10, 15, 20 times doing it, make it make the move happen versus one hard one or something like that. So I got that there. And of course, then the tines were off a little bit because purposely I, you know, had to do that. So I had to just adjust it. And that's just manually holding holding it. And if you got to, let's say this tiny has to go down, you just press it down and just hold it for maybe like a five count, then light pressure, then check it and see where you are. And then also just from all that messing around, there was a good gap here between the the tines and the feed so there I just press here and same thing hold it light pressure I just raise a little bit again light pressure raise a little bit and just it's a slow process but let's give you a look oh sorry about the tripod there let's give you a look of what we're looking like now okay so this is the where did I go here I am so this was the formerly bent nib which is now Again, with the setup I got, this is kind of the best shot I can give you. But we're looking less bent. Maybe I can focus. Oh, that looks better. There we go. So we're not bent anymore. I got a little bit of goo stuck in there. My fingernail got stuck in there. It's a little bit of <laughs> like dried fingernail stuck between the tines or that little dark spot you see in the gap there in the slit. But we're fairly aligned. You can see the uh, feed and the nib. Or, yeah, this focus is tough. The feet and the nib are nice and tight. Oh, there we go. We're nice and tight together. I could probably do just a touch more. And we're reasonably aligned. Okay. So let me just compare with a brand new one, just so you can see as a reference. And we're looking pretty darn similar. So, you know, I was delaying doing this video because I thought, oh, God, this is going to be terrible. I'm going to mess it up. But I actually worked <laughs> not too bad. So I'll do a little writing sample with the repair job and a new out of the box one. And then we're gonna grind the sucker down and give it a little mini, I mean, it's a fine, so a little mini stubby cursive italic treatment. So here's what we got going on. This is the new section. This is the one I repaired. I put some pink highlighter on it so I could tell the difference. And this is the converter I'm using. The Muji it does come with a little mini cartridge here. Uh, but of course, if you're into fountain pens, uh, you want to be able to choose your ink. So this is actually just out of my Visconti Rembrandt. This, uh, the lighting probably can't pick this up. It is, can you see it? Oh, maybe, I don't know. That's a Schmidt anyways. It's a Schmidt, uh, uh, it doesn't matter. You just got to trust me on that one. Oh, you can see upside down. That says Schmidt on it. So this is just a standard Schmidt converter. These are easy to come by and it just fits into the pen. No problem, right? So that's the converter you look for. Uh, Put the barrel on. There you go. Fits perfect. That's how you do your Muji. So we got Muji paper, Muji Muji pen, and we're going to do Monte Verde Horizon Blue. So up first, this is the Muji Pent Nib Repair. And it actually feels Pretty decent for never having doing the, done this before. It's actually not too bad. Just trying to focus there. There we go. I'll just do a little quick writing sample. A quick brown fox. I'll do our little squiggly doos. A little pressure. That's one nice thing with the Muji. It's got a little bit of bend to it. Oh, I shouldn't say bend, but a little bit of bounce. No pressure. A little bit of pressure, no pressure, a little bit of pressure. So yeah, 
I'm quite happy with that. And I'm just going to swap over to uh, the other section real quick. We'll continue on. Okay, so here we are. Muji. New pen. Again, trying to write when around a camera and a microphone is terrible, so I assure you my writing is a little better than this, but is what it is. And I tell you what, I don't know, like there is variance from nib to nib, but my repair one actually feels a little smoother. <laughs> So we're trying to make the writing sample fairly similar. You know, they look pretty much darn identical. Let's put them side by side. So that, oh, I'm, I'm bouncing this tripod like crazy. So this is new. And oh, I got to pause it to swap it over. Okay, so that writing sample was looking nasty. So I just skipped to a new page here just to show you. So this is the brand new out of the box. This is the one I repaired. They're looking pretty darn close and they both write smooth. I'd actually say this one I fixed seems a tad smoother as well. So I'm happy with that because I have another pen I need to fix that is much worse, but same problem. Now we're going to go on to giving this a little bit of a stubby cursive italic job. Again, it's pretty narrow, so we won't get extreme, but I'm not going to have two of the same when I can just buy another one off the shelf if I need to at any time at a pretty cheap price. So let's have a little fun. Okay, so this is the gear. I got a, a combo stone. So we got 400 grit on the bottom, 1,000 on the top, 4,000, 8,000, and then this little nail buff with a few different sides just to get rid of some final little birth and just kind of do a touch of smoothing. So I'm going to get started. I'll just try to do a few close-up shots of each process instead of showing them the whole thing and trying to narrate and do the nib and do a terrible job. So I'll just do a few little clips and I'll edit them together and then we'll compare in a little write-off.
So we're back. Went through it with the stones. I finished it off. I had that uh, nail buffer to just kind of smooth it a little bit uh, to make it a little more pleasurable with writing. And then I used a strop. That was a junker strop I use. I have nicer ones I use for my razors and knives. But just to kind of give it a little bit of a polish as well. So can you tell which one is which? Here, let me zoom in. If you remember, I put a little bit of pink highlighter on this one. There's a tiny bit left. So let's start off with the new nib. I'm really zoomed in here, so I, this is tricky. All right, so this is, let's just do some downstrokes. I think we can do better if I do a better angle here. Okay, let's try the regular Muji. And I'll do a, a quick little writing sample. I'll just write it and to save you the pain of watching me write. And then I'll just compare really quick. But you can see, there you go. It's a fine, so it's not going to be astronomical. But I don't know, is that a, I don't know if that's maybe like a 50%, maybe 70% increase on, on width, something like that. So let me just do a quick writing sample with the two, give you some close-ups, and then we'll call it a day. Okay, so here we go. Did a little writing sample, of course. On the top is the uh, Cursive Italic Homegrown Grind. As you can see here, the sample here. Wrote Sunset, some squigglies. And so this now, that's the regular Muji nib, just to have a side-by-side, -side, just so a regular fine. And there's nothing wrong with it being a regular fine nib. It's nice and it's a very actually decent nib. It's got a feedback feel to it, which not everyone likes, but I don't mind it whatsoever. I think it's really good for drawing. Peter Draws seems to love this pen. Uh, but you can see now in the writing sample, whoop, out of focus there, it's a little bit different. And same with the printing. So that's just a regular fine nib printing. And, you know, you get a little more, yeah, just line variation, something a little more interesting out of the pen. So I've done this same treatment on my Mont Blanc 149 at home. I actually only practiced on one nib first. It wasn't one of these. It was a different pen. I practiced on one, and I thought, well, what's the worst that can happen? I just send it to someone else if I really screw it up, and hopefully I don't screw it up too bad. And uh, I've done stuff like this before with optics and in the machine shops and other things, so I'm used to this kind of stuff a little bit, so I know this is maybe not something everyone's going to do. But, you know, you can get yourself an El Cheapo pen and play around, and again, whatever, it's two, three, four bucks, you get something like that. Uh, it's worth the play around and either decide you want to try that or go, nope, not for me. I should never even bother trying that. So there we go. That's, uh, you know, hope you enjoyed it. I know a lot of people said, show us, show us the nib repair and stub it. There you go. We did it. I hope you got something out of it and uh, trying to make things fun for you. We will catch you later. Give me a, some likes and subscribes for that one, I think. I think that was a pretty good effort.